Hello and welcome to Open Studios right here on Cape Town TV, channel 263. My name is Pimedom Tlanga, your host for today. Now we are joined by Michelle Botta right here alongside Nikki Jacobs coming through from the Cape Town Society for the Blind. And they're going to be telling us more about how they're uplifting visually impaired people through and uplifting them through education. Guys, good afternoon. Welcome to the show. Hey. Hi there. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Oh, well, it's amazing to have you on the show this afternoon. Now, I'm going to be starting with you, Nikki. Just before we can get into CTBS as an organization, can you firstly start telling us about yourself and what you do? Certainly. Well, firstly, I'm a, I'm a wife. I'm a mom mm. to three beautiful kids. Mm -hmm. um, I love walking and I also um, really enjoy reading inspirational books. And yeah, uh, definitely a people's person. Mm. Well, now tell us more about the Cape Town Society for the Blind. Now, so someone who's not aware of the organization, like the name, I believe it speaks for itself, but what does the organization do? Um, and, uh, and as you say, uplifting the blind and visually impaired people through education. Yeah. So Cape Town Society for the Blind, um, exactly like you said, um, uplifts and, and, and trains and upskills blind and visually impaired persons. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we run various courses during the year. Um, where our students um, come and, and they register and they come onto the courses. For instance, cane, cane making, um, bag and rug, rug weaving, mm -hmm. um, as well as barista uh, training. And we, we run these um, training courses quarterly. So every three months, um, we have an influx of students. Mm -hmm. um, Cape Town Society for the Blind has actually been, um, was 88 years old this year. Um, so we're going very strong, um, and I think yeah. um, founded in 1929, and, and, and being of being 88, we we speak for it's, itself, you know, mm -hmm. um, very strong organization. Well, I would like to believe that that is a very long time. It's a very long standing organization, and it's doing absolutely amazing stuff. Now, moving right over to you, Michelle. I believe you are also part of the Cape Town Society for the Blind. Yes. And I see here they say you are a jazz vocalist. Tell us more about yourself as well. Um, yes. So I am a part of the Cape Town Society for the Blind in that I'm affiliated to them. I used to be employed there, mm -hmm. um, but I left my employment there in March this year to pursue a full-time PhD mm -hmm. um, in disability studies at the University of Cape Town. So that's where I'm at at the moment. All right. Um, and I'm also a visually impaired person mm. myself. Um, my guide dog Panda is here with me today. Mm. Mm. So I'm, I'm what you would call partially sighted, which means I can see a little bit, but mm. not, not terribly much. Um, yeah, and I've, I'm still very pleased to be affiliated with CTSB and be involved in, in some of their work. Um, when I was working there, I was working with, um, in terms of career development, so helping young, mostly young people with visual impairments to find and sustain um, gainful employment mm, all right. in various sectors. So, and I'm still very passionate about that, about employment for um, people with visual impairments, but people with disabilities generally. Mm -mm. Well, now, that's very interesting. Now, what actually inspired you to join the organization at first? And how, like, when did you join it exactly? And what inspired you to actually join the organization? Mm. So I was working with um, CTSB from about 2014. And initially, I, I wanted to work within the nonprofit sector and within the disability sector. So I left um, my studies. I finished a master's degree in gender studies in 2014. And I was looking for somewhere that I could contribute in the disability sector in South Africa. Mm -hmm and was very fortunate to have met um, the CEO at CTSB and, and became involved through, through that, first in public relations um, and then moving on into career development. So, so that's really what inspired me to, um, yeah, to be affiliated with the organization, is just a, a general interest in working with people with disabilities mm -hmm. in South Africa. Now, Nikki, coming back to you, I believe you said uh, that uh, the, the society is not actually a membership-based organization. Now, who are the beneficiaries uh, or for who can benefit from the society? Um, our beneficiaries are our students, mm -hmm. as well as our SPUs, which is um, our small business units that, that actually produce the beautiful cane and woven products that, that gets made at CTSB. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, now, also, can you tell us about your specific role that you play within the organization? Yes. Um, I'm the fundraising and PR practitioner mm -hmm. 
basically what I do is I try as far as possible to get donors on board to fund um, CTSB. Mm -hmm. We have various projects, um, you know, annually that needs to be funded. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also part um, part of my, my role is also to look at PR, so looking at media, social media, um, and, and just lots of networking, you know, meeting mm. new people um, so that we can put CTSB on the map out there in terms of people knowing more about us, what we do, what we offer, um, and the services that we provide. Mm -mm. Now, you know, I'm very fascinated by, like, this whole uh, thing. And also, as you also mentioned, uh, Michelle, that, like, you advise people, uh, visually impaired people, on, like, careers that they can do. Like, are there specific careers and there are some that people who are visually impaired actually cannot get into those particular mm -hmm. fields? Can you tell us more on that since you worked? Yeah, on sure. Um, on one level, you have to be realistic. So there are um, careers that are not going to be accessible for someone with a visual impairment. Um, so for example, I mean, to use a very basic example, you don't want someone who's blind to be cutting your head open to yeah. operate on <laughs> yeah. your brain, right? So if ever you are get wheeled into the emergency room and you see me looking down at you, just yeah. run, get out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't want me chopping you open. Yeah. Um, but actually, barring some of those really obvious exceptions, depending on the person's qualifications, and um, qualifications are really important, and unfortunately it's part of our education system for people with disabilities in South Africa, mm. um, um, really lets our students down mm -hmm. in terms of literacy and numeracy, and it's something that we really, as civil society and within government, people need to be t paying more attention to. Mm. Um, but if a person has um, the qualifications and the, the aptitudes mm -hmm. required for a career, there's very little that someone with a visual impairment won't be able to do with the right support and the right technology um, to, to assist them to do that. And there's some really fantastic tech yeah. um, around, um, particularly over the last 10 years, that, that really can support people to do um, a vast array of careers, everything from accountancy to radio presenting mm -hmm. to software development. Um, yeah, there's, there's a really a, a broader range of careers. It's not like it was 50 years ago when blind people had to answer the telephone and that yeah. was really the only mm -hmm. career that the people saw fit for them to do. Mm -hmm. All right, no, that is absolutely. Now, coming back to you, Nikki, uh, since you told us about the people who are benefiting, how has the actually response been from the people who have uh, been assisted by their society somehow, all the students who've actually passed through, how has the response been, you know, in terms of like we see that Michelle was part of the organization at some point and she's now completing a PhD, now with uh, the rest of everyone else who have been part of the, who have been benefiting rather from the society, how has the response been? I think definitely from a student point of view, um, you know, initially when they come in the first time to CTSB, um, they obviously, they're unsure of what to expect. Um, they're a little bit nervous, mm. etc. cetera. And, and I mean, we see it on an annual basis and on a quarterly basis when we have an influx of students. Um, give them one week there. And the following week, I can tell you honestly, their confidence, mm. just, you know, the, the whole demeanor just changes. They are so positive um, because, you know, they, they feel that the, the upliftment, they feel that, you know, there's a purpose for them. And I think that's so important. And that is really what we at All CTSB right. want oh. to do. All right. No, thank you very much, Nikki. Now, we're going to go, go into an ad break right now. When you come back, we're going to be continuing our conversation with Nikki along with Michelle from the Cape Town Society for the Black. Stay right there.